All right, hello everybody and welcome to the uh, Singularity series. This one is gonna discuss singularity of your marketing, singularizing your marketing. So here's the thing about singularity as a refresher, it's the one thing that applies to everything. There's nothing in the world from which singularity cannot benefit, okay? Singularity is the one thing that applies to everything. And so that's why I'm doing so many videos, ironically, on singularity is because it's the one thing that applies to no matter what you're doing. So I'm gonna go over a marketing funnel here. And the title of this video is probably gonna be how to make any business make money or the simple secret to increase sales for any business in the world. And the thing is, it's 100% as a result of singularity. And I'm gonna show you the one most effective way to do it. And this is a marketing campaign. And so um, each of these are the steps in the marketing campaign, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna singularize each step. So the number one people make, number one mistake people make when they're doing their marketing is they try to have each step doing multiple things. And if you multiply the first step by three and the next step by three and the next step by three and the next step by three, so on and so forth, you end up with a practically infinite number of variations, which makes it impossible to diagnose the funnel, impossible to optimize the funnel, impossible to make that thing make money. When you get this wrong, what you'll find, and people, people do this by default, we're uh, somewhat prone to multiplicity. So in order to simplify, we need to singularize. And if you don't do that, here's what's gonna happen. Your cost per lead is gonna go up. You're gonna spend a whole lot more time paying for that cost to lead go up, so you lose financial wealth and time wealth. You also lose your mental wealth because you're more stressed out. Um, your business is not gonna make as much money, which means, by the way, that you're not gonna make as much money and that you can't hire as many people or serve as many customers or any of that stuff. And it's gonna take longer to cost more, to do less, to make less money, and it's gonna be more stressful in the process. That's multiplicity. So how do you fix that? You singularize each step in the funnel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over a service funnel. Now this could be different for your business, but the principle remains the same. You gotta singularize things. So this is a service funnel. We do a ton of these. This applies for anybody that generates a phone call to do business. So if you have a car dealership, if you have a mattress store, if you have a music school, if you're an attorney or financial advisor, financial advisor or a CPA um, or an ad agency, anybody that generates a phone call to do business, this funnel applies. Now, singularity applies to any funnel, but we're going to go over the service funnel. Oh, and before I get started, here's something else to know. For each step, there is one purpose, okay? We're singularizing the purpose and the outcome of each step. And be sure to watch the video on the law of singularity because there is always one exception to singularity. Now, you might say, if we have an exception to singularity, isn't that multiplicity? No, because there's only one exception. There's only a singular exception. So I'm gonna give you the exceptions at the end. And what's interesting about these exceptions is they actually still drive to the primary cause, the primary outcome. Okay, you'll see what I mean as we go through here. So if you run a business and you're advertising, you're running ads, and I hope you're running ads, otherwise you're missing out on some business. Now, when somebody sees your ad, there is one purpose and one purpose only of that ad, and that is to get a click. If you're trying to use multiple purposes or to achieve multiple outcomes with your ads, the cost is gonna go up, the customer is gonna get confused, you'll lose sales, you'll lose money, you'll lose, lose time. All the negatives that I discussed right before we went into this apply every step of the way. So there's one purpose for your advertising, it's to get a click. Again, this is, or I shouldn't say again, it's worth noting this is all in digital media. These same rules apply in direct mail and uh, any other number of media you can use for your business, but we're gonna use, use digital media for now. Step number two, once you get that click, the purpose of that click is to send somebody to a landing page. Now you could call this a home page, an about us page, a call now page, a sales page, a video sales letter. You could do any of these names and variations, but at the end of the day, it's a web page, it's a landing page, which has one purpose and one purpose only, and that is to generate a call. So when you run ads, the only thing you're testing for is not even click-through rate. I used to think it was click-through rate, it's not. The only thing you're testing for is cost per click. Can you get 
the maximum number of clicks at the most reasonable price. Okay, it's the one test objective. On the landing page, the one thing you're optimizing for is will they pick up the phone and call? So every piece of copy, every headline, every button, every bullet point, every image is designed to get somebody to pick up the phone and call. That's the one thing and one thing only. I'm gonna cover the exception, okay? Remember at the end of this video. Step number three, when they call, there is one thing and one thing only that that phone call is designed to do, okay? And that is set an appointment. Oh goodness, I'm doing this out of, in the wrong place. So number three is the inbound phone call, okay? So there we go. So add landing page inbound phone call. And the one purpose of that phone call is to set an appointment. Now you might get contact information, you might uh, text them to get the call in, but the exceptions here always point to the primary outcome, so don't forget that. So maybe you get some contact information to follow up. Why? So you can set the appointment. All right, now once you've set the appointment, the one and only purpose of the appointment is to get a sale. Now, there are some people that believe, and I tend to agree with them, um, that if you and what you are selling actually significantly improves the lives of your customers, then you have a moral obligation to do the best job possible and everything in your power above and beyond what a reasonable person would expect and do and agree to, to get your future customer to buy from you. Because if they are actually worse off, if they don't buy, then you did them a disservice. You made them worse off by not doing everything you could to help them buy what they need and want. So I agree with that philosophy. Um, if what you are selling genuinely, objectively, measurably improves the lives of your customers, and if every person who doesn't buy is worse off, then you have a moral obligation to turn every single meeting into a sale, okay? Now, if what you're selling doesn't objectively, measurably help or improve the lives of those customers that you would sell to, stop selling it. Sell something else. There's plenty of stuff in the world that makes life better, go sell that stuff, okay? Now, once you have a sale, you have a meeting, you then move on to step five, which is fulfillment, which is gonna be different for each business. But the step is the same. If you're a law school, or if you're a law school, if you're a law firm, um, then the case is the fulfillment. If you're a music school, then the lesson is the fulfillment. If you're an advisor, then having a new client is the fulfillment. And, uh, if you're a mattress store, obviously selling the mattress or getting the mattress delivered is the fulfillment. Now the purpose of the fulfillment is one thing and one thing only, which includes what most people think. Most people think fulfillment is just to do what you said. It's actually not. Stick with me on this. Most people think fulfillment is just to do what you said you would do, just to give somebody what they bought. That is not the purpose of the fulfillment. The purpose of the fulfillment is to get a customer without spending more money. How do you do that? With one word, it's called a referral. Now, why is that different from doing what you were paid to do? You can't get a referral without meeting the condition of doing what you were paid to do. The only way to get a referral is to do what you were paid to do so well that somebody refers you. So the referral is the one and only objective of fulfillment. Every step of the way, you're doing the job that makes the person so impressed, so happy, so satisfied, that they refer business to you, okay? So let's review. Every step of the way, if you reduce scope and eliminate multiplicity from this process, your business will make more money, you'll make more money faster, it'll be easier, you'll have more profit, your life will be better, so you'll have more time, so you have time wealth, you'll have more money, so you have money wealth, and you'll be less stressed out, so you're gonna have mental wealth as well. So there's all these different forms of wealth that singularity creates. So let's review. With your ads, you want one thing and one thing only, it's a click. With your landing page, you want one thing and one thing only, it's a call. With your call, you want one thing and one thing only, you want to set an appointment. With that meeting, you want one thing and only, one thing and one thing only, which is a sale. And with that fulfillment, you want one thing and one thing only, which is a referral. Great. You want to click on ads, call from the page, get an appointment from the call, and have a meeting, a sale from the meeting, and a referral from the sale. Those are the only things, okay? Click call appointment sale referral. That's it. Now, 
the law of singularity says there's always one exception, okay? There are exceptions, and they are singular. Now, what's interesting is these exceptions, they actually all still point to the same objective of the next step. So, what you want on your ad is a click, unless you're using a YouTube branding strategy, which is what I prescribe to some of my agency clients. And so that means that what you would do is instead of getting a click now, you get a click in the future, okay? You're still going for clicks. One gets you clicks now, one gets you clicks in the future. That's what branding is, is investing in a future decision. How do you do that? By lots of impressions at a low cost per impression. What you want is like recall. So think Coca-Cola, uh, Procter & Gamble, um, and all of these big mass market brands that really are just buying impressions and nothing else. They're not direct marketing companies. So you can learn from that branding and buy a click in the future. So you're still buying a click, by the way. The ad gets a click today, and if you're branding correctly, you get a click in the future. So the exception still leads to the one outcome. Now, here's the exception to the landing page. Some people like to have an opt-in form. Hey, we recommend that sometimes too. Here's the thing, five, three to 5% five of the people in the market are ready to buy now. The best landing pages in the world, on average, are gonna get, uh, I shouldn't say the best in the world. Let's say the most common would be anywhere from a three to 10% call rate. So 10% of the people that land on your page are ready to talk to you now. Maybe they're not at work or whatever. The other 90% are ready to make a decision in the next 90 to, I believe the math says, it's like half a year. So it's like 180 days. So the 90 to 180 day follow-up has the other 90% of business. Okay, so you wanna give them the option to opt in so you can follow up with them over the next six months. And there's the other 90% of the market. How do you do that? You get an email opt-in. Guess what that email opt-in drives to? A phone call. So the exception still drives to the primary outcome. All right, great, so we got an appointment. And what's the exception to appointments? The exception is if the person won't set the appointment there, right then and there, then you get their follow-up information, okay? You got their number and their name. And what you do, excuse me, is you make sure you get the information necessary to follow up with them to guess what? Set an appointment, okay? Now there's all kinds of ways you can go about setting an appointment, but just understand the call is there to get one thing and one thing only, the appointment. The exception is you might collect some information which helps you set the appointment. Now here's the meeting, and then there's the sale. And what's the exception? Um, the exception is when there is no sale. Now this might seem counterintuitive. In getting a sale, your objective should be to maximize goodwill. Um, one of my teachers says that your income is directly proportional to the amount of goodwill in the marketplace. I believe that, I think it's true. I've, I've seen it to be true. In fact, I'm gonna do a video on singularity of success. There's one word for the singularity of monetary success and it's reciprocity, okay? And so reciprocity is at play here because if you are providing enough value that the person genuinely feels that you have helped them more than they've ever asked for for free, they will naturally be inclined to buy from you. So that's how you get the sale, but what if they don't buy? Then the reciprocity you've created still leads to a sale later because they may change their mind, okay? So the objective is to create the sale, and if you didn't get it now, it's to get the sale later. So you might be seeing some patterns with the exceptions. Click now, that's the goal. The exception is get a click later. Call now, that's the goal. The exception is get a call later. Appointment now, the exception is get an appointment later. Sale now, the exception is get an, a, a sale later. So what's the exception to referrals? Well, I'm glad you asked. It's actually really simple. It's testimonials. So what does a testimonial still do? A testimonial, first of all, your fulfillment process is designed to be so good that a customer naturally feels inclined to refer to you. If you ask for a testimonial, what are they more likely to do? They're more likely to do what? They're more likely to refer. And what is a testimonial in fact, but a written or video message designed to refer many people to you? So it's not a phone call, 
but it's a testimonial which, which uh, refers people in groups or in the masses. So this is how you singularize your marketing. There's not a business on the planet that can't benefit from singularizing every step, okay? Now, in your case, it may be ads to a landing page, to a sale, to an upsell, to fulfillment. Say you're running e-com. Um, say, well, this actually works the same for real estate agents. Ads, landing page, call, meeting, fulfillment would be the selling of the home. So just to review, the ads, the only purpose of your ad is to get a click now, the exception is to get a click later. Landing page, the only purpose of your landing page is to get a call now, the only exception is to get a call later. The call, the only purpose of the call is to get an appointment, the exception is to get an appointment later. The meeting, the only purpose of the meeting is to get a sale, the only exception is you might get a sale later. And fulfillment, the only purpose of fulfillment is to get a referral, which inherently includes doing a great job, the exception to that is to get testimonials, which are in fact referrals. So that's the singularity of your marketing. Um, I think last I checked, I've got like 16 to 20 different um, ways to look at singularity. So uh, this one's incredibly important. It actually took me a couple of years to figure out how simple, uh, the fact that this simplicity here is the most powerful. Um, I uh, personally fall victim quite often to uh, the temptation of multiplicity. Oh, what if we make this complex and that, and let's do a diagram and super funnel and... No, what you want is just one step each step of the way, okay? And you want to optimize to one goal. And that's going to help you split test faster. You're going to get more clicks sooner. You're going to get more calls sooner. You're going to get more uh, meetings sooner. You're going to, get, you're going to get more revenue sooner, and you're going to get more referrals sooner. So that's it for this episode of the Singularity Series. This is how to singularize your marketing. Uh, if you enjoy this, uh, be sure to comment. I want to hear what you think. Uh, let's have a dialogue. Do you think I missed some points? Are there some uh, points that actually you disagree with? Uh, let's talk. I love to uh, talk and engage. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe, the regular stuff. And uh, be sure to reach out to us. Also, follow the links in the description. There's some tools I use that are incredibly helpful that I think you'll find helpful too. So my name is Sterling Van Gogh. I really hope you enjoyed this. Uh, be sure to comment, subscribe, and let's talk soon. Thanks, guys. Over and out.